We're going to be talking about Archangel Michael here, how to connect with him, why you would want to connect with him, how you know he's around, and what to do with the information once you get it. I know, that's the whole thing. So let's dive in here. If you guys don't know, I am Michelle with Angel Souls. I have a whole library of videos on this channel. Took a long time to make them, but hop into one of the playlists, let it ride, okay? I have lots of educational videos on repeating numbers. I don't even know what else is all on there. I mean, a little bit of everything. Uh, Ascension, just go to the front page of the Angel Souls thing. It's all there, okay? There you go. All right, let's talk about Archangel Michael. First and foremost, why would you want to work with Archangel Michael? He is associated with protection, I think, first and foremost. And yes, I think with things, uh, the way they're going to be splitting open, it's not a bad thing. As a matter of fact, it's going to be very freeing for people who have done the work. It's going to be scary for people who have not, right? It's, it's sort of like it's time to pay your dues or you've been working from a certain mindset of get yours first. Maybe it's greed or competition or, you know, just self-centeredness. And this is going to be a big wake up call, right? And that's coming. It's not coming just like in the next couple of days or weeks or whatever, but like this is going to be an ongoing process. So a lot of people may be wanting to connect with Archangel Michael for protection purposes. Not a bad idea, especially if you are someone who you've chosen the light, you've been working for the light and uh, people are going to want to scapegoat you. They're going to want to diminish you. They're going to want to try to make you look stupid. Just see it for what it is. Remember your power. And this is another thing that Archangel Michael helps us do. He helps us remember our power. The other thing that he helps with is clarity. You're going to need some of that too. Okay. <laughs> but Michael also helps along with Archangel Metatron. All the Archangels help with this, but help with ascension, expanded awareness, expanded consciousness. So if you don't remember any other angel or archangel, first of all, you have guardian angels. So you can always say guardian angels help me. Uh, but if you forget any of the other angels, Archangel Michael. Now, if you've watched me for any amount of time, you know, I go way overboard with like covering my behind when it comes to working with angels. So I put all the words around it and I say, Archangel Michael of God's purest love and light. Thank you for coming to me now. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for surrounding me with love. Thank you so much for taking the love that I have to give and delivering it out to anyone who needs it. Thank you so much for bringing me clarity and helping me understand my direction. Thank you for giving me courage and strength to take the appropriate steps to fulfill my highest potential. Those are the kinds of things that you can say to Archangel Michael. Now, I know some people, especially if you grew up Catholic, I guess it's typical for you guys to pray to angels and archangels. Uh, that's a hard no in my book, but yeah, you do you. It, it, it's fine. <laughs> as long as you're doing it and you're doing it with a pure heart, you do whatever is comfortable for you. What might you get back in the form of an experience? Now, that part is very unique to each individual. I often see Archangel Michael as sort of a piercing light. Now, I originally used to see Michael coming in sort of a red light. Um, most people associate Archangel Michael with blue. But maybe I'm just an oddball. I don't know. <laughs> like Now I see him as blue. Uh, but I think maybe it was I was being a little influenced by artwork back then because a lot of artwork had, would have reds because he's associated with being the warrior angel. It could have very well been that. I think as well, it was sort of root chakra energy that was maybe opening up, flooding, like coming out because I was leaning on Archangel Michael to help me have clarity on what doesn't make me feel safe. What blocks do I have? Michael's great for that. Oh, I should put that out there first and foremost. Clear the blocks with Archangel Michael. Okay, there you go. Now you know. All right. <laughs> but it could have very well been the root chakra trying to heal itself while I was working with Archangel Michael. And um, 
that sense of safety and protection and material things in this world. Am I going to be okay? Am I going to be able to protect myself and provide for myself? So if you see golden blue light, I say golden because often as we're going through this dimensional energy, you are a third dimensional being. We're trying to step into a fifth dimensional consciousness. Your body is 3D. The consciousness is 5D. Yes. Uh, fourth dimension is kind of where people uh, kick over when they croak. Okay. <laughs> they go into the fourth dimension. That's, you know, the upper fourth dimension is typically where your spirit guides are. And when someone's doing some sort of spiritual practice that is practical, they're usually going into a fourth dimensional energy. One of the bigger frustrations with people, and I think why not everybody is really kind of embrace working with angels, one, they associate it with Christianity, which is wild because there are angels in, in all of the monotheistic faiths, right? Uh, and there's some form of angels in all other faiths. So I, 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 I don't know. That makes sense to me. I love it. Okay. But <laughs> some people just don't want to go that direction or they're afraid or they think that they're not worthy. Let's clear that up right now. You're, yeah, you're worthy. They are here to help you. That's what they do. So why wouldn't you invite them in and have them help you? You feel me? So don't be afraid of that. And also we don't need to make things too complicated. Now, I know a lot of angel mediums out there have very different takes on things. Some really love ceremony and ceremony can be beautiful. Ritual can be beautiful if used correctly, of course, but you don't have to, you don't have to. Okay. The physical setting up of things. I think I was just telling somebody this. It's not that the angels are going, Oh, Someone put out some roses. That's like the bat signal for angels. Time for us to go in. It's not about that. It's that ro <laughs> rose, altars, all those things. It can help us connect because we have something tangible. We're tangible creatures, right? So we, we see the physical things there or the scent of rose is the highest frequency scent, right? So that helps raise your frequency so that you can perceive higher dimensions. Now all y'all are going to run out and get roses, rose oil, those sorts of things. But while we're on that topic, Archangel Barachiel, if you've never heard of this before, will bring in the scent of rose or you'll see roses around when he is bringing you blessings. Now you might be like, hold, hold everything. I want to talk about working with Barachiel. We'll do that in another video, okay? <laughs> this one's for Michael, okay? So so just be aware if you smell roses or something like that, or jasmine. Jasmine's another uh, scent that we say attracts angels, but it's not actually that. It, do, you, do you feel what I'm saying? Like you raise up and then you're like, oh, look at this. It's like me getting on a ladder and finally being able to see the top of my refrigerator. Side note, I'm five foot two. I can barely see into the freezer. I put on heels one time and I was like, oh my gosh, this is what my guests see on top of my refrigerator. It was a whole thing. But <laughs> you see what I'm getting at here with the scent. So that's why people will have an altar. That's why people will, um, you know, use the essential oils and, and those kinds of things. If it helps you, run with it. Now, how do you know if Archangel Michael is around you? Usually you'll feel chills. Let's break that one down. Because you can get chills with dark energy as well. Shivers. They're calling it shivers. Like a dark energy is going to make you almost like shiver and quiver and do all this. When it's Archangel Michael, you feel like you're meeting a rock star in my opinion. You know, it's sort of like, like <laughs> there's just this beautiful energy that comes over you. Now he does, I perceive him as a very big presence. Uh, so... I guess we should get into the clair. So there's clairvoyant, clairsentient, clairaudient, clair olfactory, which I think is clear smelling. That is the smelling the roses. Like if you're, um, you know, Barakio's bringing you some blessings and you smell that. Or this is where people start, they smell like cigarette smoke and no one's smoking. And some people have a take on that as like someone might be doing something to your energy. Um, others think that that is... Um, beings that have not 
crossed over. Did you notice what I did? I went like this, that's inviting in, and then I cleaned it out. We have to be careful with that, yes? We got all kinds of things to talk about, maybe not in this video, but you comment down below about if that's interesting to you, uh, we can do that. And actually, since we're on that topic and Michael is a part of this too, about the clearing, when somebody is like talking to you and you say, that is not mine, that is yours. This is literally doing something, whether you believe it or not. It's shifting the energy back to them. So that's just a little side tip. La bonus, okay? Unless you want a whole video on that, I can talk about that. But Michael comes in, whether you're clear audience, clear seeing, or wait, clear audience, clear hearing, clairvoyant is clear seeing, clear sentient. I think I left that one out. That's clear feeling, the clear olfactory. I'm probably missing one. It don't matter. Anyway, like you perceive them in the way that you're going to perceive them. Do not put pressure around this. This is the biggest thing that blocks us from communicating is we have expectations. If you have followed me for any amount of time, you're probably laughing to yourself right now and be like, dang, she's still on that thing about don't have expectations. I am still on it, okay? Because, <laughs> because we might have some new viewers here and they need to hear that as well. So don't go into it with any expectations. Just go into it with a pure heart asking to be protected, and then putting high frequency words around inviting in Archangel Michael so that you are not inviting in other beings. Yes? Okay, so I'm going to give the little overview here. Like I said, in other videos, we can go deeper. So let's go a little bit further. So let's say you're clear sentient, you're feeling. Maybe you start to feel a very big presence come to you, but it's like the biggest love you've ever experienced in your life. Some people experience a little fear with this, but this is not the kind of fear of like a lower frequency being coming to you. That's something different. Like it's got a creepy feeling to it. This is the kind of thing of, this is so beautiful. I don't know what to do with it kind of thing. And we as humans, we have an ego consciousness that starts firing off to protect us, right? So it might go, warning, warning, we don't know what this is, right? <laughs> so Michael will also back up, not come as close to you. And I want to clear this up as well. Archangels, I know somebody's going to argue with me out there and that's okay. Everyone's got their take. My take on this and the way I understand this is that Archangels do not come to you in their full form. How come? You would burst hot dog in a microwave. Okay. Your physical body. I, I'm, I'm with all the examples tonight. Okay. Listen, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. but, but your physical body can only handle so much because if it were that easy, your angel would just pop right up in front of you and be like, Hey, what's up? You know, <laughs> first of all, you'd freak out. Second of all, your physical being cannot take it. So they send an energy. They, they can come close, but it's the, the thing that you feel enveloping you is a layer of that archangel that your body can handle having around. Does that make sense? And again, it's going to be uh, kind of specific to each individual. I tend to have, because uh, I'm so used to it, I, I've acclimated to that energy. So I can have a little bit more of them coming close to me. Most angel mediums are like that, you know, that, again, it's just a uh, practice that we do. So we are ready for it. Um, but if you don't experience that or you don't hear anything or sometimes to uh, Michael, you can ask them to do whatever. If you're like, Hey, I'm a very visual person. Put me in the experience of meeting with you. You might see this gorgeous garden open up. And it's the most vibrant colors you've ever seen in your life. And, you know, maybe there are actual animals that in this 3D world you couldn't get close to, but there you can. They'll cuddle with you, right? Like, you know, they can sit right next to you safely. Obviously, again, not in the real world. Thank you. Okay. I know it sounds weird to have to say that, but we have to say that. Um, you know, so you can ask for this whole experience to open up in front of you. You can imagine if you want that Archangel Michael is coming in human form and sitting next to you. Let me just stop right there. Sometimes, and I've had this experience when I was working with Archangel Gabriel. 
I was working with Gabriel with sacral chakra issues. So uh, sexuality, stuck emotions, um, creativity, feeling blocked in that. And I was going through a very painful time. Healing's not a hop, skip, and a jump. It's not sunshine and rainbows. It's some work, right? So I actually, with Gabriel, talking about Gabriel now, started to go into this visual and I visualized that Gabriel was picking me up like a baby and holding on to me. And that was the most beautiful, restorative experience I think I could have had. And it was so needed. It was so needed at that time. So if you're with Michael and you're not feeling safe or you're not having clarity or you're battling something, it's another reason to bring Archangel Michael in. Whatever it is, whatever it is that you feel like you're battling, you can work with Archangel Michael and he can hold you like a baby if you want. I just, I wanted to give all these examples because I don't want us to get stuck on it's supposed to be like this or I haven't done it right. There's no right or wrong here. You just want to be careful about what you're invoking in and how you're approaching it through your intentions. Other than that, they will take the wheel. Now, for some of you, if you're not that experienced with meditation, for example, and maybe you're having a hard time going deep into meditation, don't worry about it. You're okay. Close your eyes and breathe. No, that's not all meditation. I mean, it kind of, that's how it starts, right? Eventually, you will get more and more comfortable letting go and sinking into a space that's outside of your human story where you settle into a space that is the soul space. And this is where the angels and archangels can meet you. Okay. So for some of you, if you're not that experienced, you might see your guardian angel, one of your guardian angels first. That's okay. Whatever you do, don't sit there and judge the experience because it will kick you out of the frequency to be in there. Once you're in it and you're having your experience, just allow yourself to enjoy it. You can ask your questions. The answers are not going to be, most likely, what you think. Now, angels and archangels are very direct. You cannot get your ego involved. What might this be like? So let's say career and money, prosperity, abundance. That's a big one right now. And you might, let's say you've been struggling with finances and you feel like you have a block or you've been struggling with love. You feel like you have a block uh, and you go and you work with Archangel Michael and you say, Michael, what is the block that's holding me back in this area of my life? And maybe you start to have a feeling of peace. Do you know how many people push that away? No, no, no. I got to do this right. I have to get my answer. That's not my answer. But it is. Because it's telling you not to worry. Or it's telling you that the block is the anxiety and the fear that you're putting around it. The worrying is making it go out of your existence. Right? Now that's a little oversimplistic because then when we get into like being human again, it's like, oh, how am I not supposed to worry about this bill that's sitting here <laughs> staring me down? Like we understand, right? Like there's, there's a practicality to it. But when we're connecting with Archangelic energy, especially Archangel Michael, especially during these times that are coming up, Michael is going to be ever present with us as our protector and as a lot of, like I said, a lot of people see him as the warrior angel. So there's, there's going to be some of that there, but to help us hurry up and catch up with our ascension process, that's Metatron as well. That's a separate video, but to help us kick into this sort of high gear of like, Hey, <laughs> wrap it up over here. Okay. No more extending this lesson. Like we gotta, we gotta wrap this up because you need to be present. Okay. So if you are in meditation and Michael comes through, maybe you don't see anything and that's okay too. Or sometimes when I meditate, I'm having a full being experience. And so I don't know how to explain it. It's, it, there's no clairs involved. It's just sort of, um, vastness. 
I don't want to sit here and be like, I'm in pure consciousness. Probably not because I still have to be human. So I don't know if I access that. But I go into this space where there's just nothingness. And for some people that is terrifying. But if you've already run through all the clairs, that feels like that's the next natural place where you're not needing the song and dance anymore, really, to know that you're being communicated with. You're just in it. You've taken in the messaging. It comes through our cells. It comes, it's wired into our DNA. Yes, it's wired into our DNA. The messages come in. The cells kind of activate all of that. I know a lot of people are going to be like, well, that, it, it's not going to make sense to you. You know why? Because that's not of this world. I mean, we are of this world, but the process and, and the why behind it is not something that has been shared with scientists here. It doesn't make it wrong. Right? It just means they don't know. Okay. All right. So that is another way that you might be experiencing it. What I would, I know people are going to do this because I see it all the time. Because I do readings for people, I will see, I'm going to call it spiritual narcissism. Then people come and say, I am super advanced. No, you're not. Well, how do you know? Because you said it. Anybody who's actually spiritually advanced doesn't even think like that. Do you know what I mean? Like you're not going to get a wise person who comes and says, listen, I am very wise. They, they don't do that. A wise person knows that there's always something more to learn. And a wise person usually has found their way to compassion and, and understands that everybody is where they are and it's beautiful and perfect for them. So if you have to come in laying down how special you are, that's insecurity and you're trying to convince me of your worth instead of just stepping into your worth and being your worth. So there's another message for you too. Michael will give you that kind of clarity. Michael will come through and be like, you've got to stop this habit. You've got to make sure this doesn't happen. Michael can be for some people, and I want to address this, be associated with predictions because of that clarity thing, I do believe. I have always said angels and archangels are not predictive. And what I mean by that is they, because they don't interfere with human free will, they're not going to come in and say, I see you winning the lottery. They don't predict the future like that. If it is not, if it's not going to mess with your human free will for you to know, they will bring it through to you. Or if it's something that you've already made a decision on within your soul's contract or the actions, the energy you're moving towards a certain outcome, they can give you affirmation of that. Yes, keep heading that direction. You're on a good path. They will also give us warnings uh, or a heads up about things that we need to be ready for. So think of them as the teacher that says, hey, write this down. This is going to be on the test. But they don't actually give you the answers. It's that. So you're in meditation. You're connecting with Archangel Michael. You're trying to receive without letting the ego interfere. What do you do with the information when you come out of the meditation? Nothing. You do nothing with it. Because you're trying to... Do something with it <laughs> would be you getting the ego involved and trying to fill in the blanks with your mind and start forcing an outcome. That's not what we want to do. You want to let that stuff simmer. Okay. Let it simmer in your cells or what, however you want to see that, but let it just be in your heart. And what will happen? Let it integrate there. What will end up happening is suddenly you realize oh my gosh, I, I have this sudden inspiration and the ideas are flowing. See, this is another, that can happen, but some people can get very egotistical about that and go, oh, I was in the flow. I had my muse like, oh, I was going to be famous from this. Stop with the famous. Famous ain't it. You're going to see by the end of this year that famous ain't, I'm so serious, I said ain't it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You're more valuable being authentic than being a caricature of yourself. All right. So thank you. Okay. So do nothing with it for now. Allow, allow it to sit in the heart space. You'll have these sudden epiphanies. You'll have uh, a sudden different type of reaction to a situation. Or maybe you just feel at peace 
and then the answers become clear. That happens more often than people realize. We block out the very obvious answers because we're worrying about it. Okay, so this is what Michael helps us do, clearing away a lot of the stagnant energy that we may be, you know, having blocking our progress. So I want to kind of just end this video by saying Michael's also going to get us prepared for the spiritual warfare and people are like, rah, 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 don't tell me that. Stop. Stop. Okay, you are not little precious made of glass. Can't tell you nothing. I mean, unless you are in like a, a down place right now, then okay, you get a pass. We understand. We love you. We're here for you. We're going to help lift you up. But if you're just somebody who's lazy, <laughs> you just want, you know, you want spirituality to be sunshine and rainbows. It's not. This is some of the most serious stuff. I mean, it can be, but not always, right? There's some serious stuff here and we have to be ready for it. And we have to be ready to take what we've learned and implement it. So leave your questions down below. Check out my other videos and I'm sending you all so much love. Take care.